Hi everyone, welcome to our third video in our series on multi-way factorial ANOVA. In today's video, we're gonna be building off of the previous two, but we're really focusing on the difference between interactions and main effects and making sure that you have kind of a good understanding of conceptually what those two things are, rather than you know mathematically how they're computed and how we get like the omnibus F statistic to actually conduct the inferential test. So let's focus on a two by two factor factorial design uh, to kind of simplify this problem. Um, so let's say we're studying placebo effects and gender. Uh, so we, this is kind of based on a, a realistic uh, psychological study of placebo effects where we might have induced controlled thermal pain in both men and women. So that would be our first factor. Um, and then we're going to have them either take placebo or nothing, which would be our second factor. Um, so because these are both, you know, uh, independent groups of people, right? We don't have any repeated measures here. Uh, all of our men stay, stay in that group, all of our women stay in that group. Um, and then for the placebo, you only get the placebo or you only get nothing. So these are independent groups. And in our two by two design, we ultimately have four different groups. You can be men who got the placebo, women who got the placebo, men who got nothing, or women who got nothing. And you can think about each of these cells, you know, having 30 people randomly assigned to each of them. Uh, but in the in the tables that we're going to be showing, we'll just put the mean in each box. So we're going to kind of aggregate that down to just the mean. But you can really think about it as, you know, there's 30 people in each of those groups. Now, if we have a mean then for men who took the placebo of 5.3, a, a mean for women who took the placebo of 6.4, a mean pain for men who took nothing as 7.5, and a mean pain for women who took nothing as 6.5, uh, we can then kind of aggregate across one variable to get the main effect of the other variable. So remember, right, the main effect of one variable means on average across the other variable. So literally to calculate that then, I would take 5.3, 7.5, average those together to get 6.4. I'd take 6.4 and 6.5, average those together to get 6.5, and this would be the main effect of gender, which is to say this is the effect of gender on average across both levels. Right? So we're ignoring whether you took the placebo or whether you got nothing, and we're just saying, on average, how do men and women compare in their ratings of the perception of thermal pain? Similarly, we can get a main effect of the placebo, where we average now across the columns to go, okay, average men and women together, uh, we'll get a 5.85. Average men and women together in the nothing group, we get a 7.05. This is the difference in rating between the placebo and the nothing groups ignoring your gender, right? So on average across genders, this is the effect of the placebo. So in the margins then, we have a main effect of placebo and we have a main effect of gender down here. And in this case, you know, we'd have to do a statistical test to actually compare these things, but it looks like men and women on average are pretty, pretty similar, but people who took the placebo generally had lower ratings of thermal pain than people who took nothing. So it looks like we might have a main effect of placebo here, but not necessarily a main effect of gender. To ask about the interaction though, we wanna know does the effect of the placebo depend on gender? And the other way you can think about this is the, the effect, right? So in this case, it's our, our placebo versus nothing can be represented as a difference. So the difference between taking the placebo versus taking nothing for men was 2.2. Whereas the difference between taking the placebo and taking nothing for women was 0.2. And then we can say, are these differences different, right? Because if these differences were the same, then that would suggest that the effect of the placebo is the same in both groups, right? If this was a 2.2 over here for men and this was a 2.2 over here for women, there would be no difference between those differences. Right? The placebo effect would be the same if you were in the, men, the group of men or if you were in the group of women. However, what we actually see is a difference in the magnitude of that effect. The placebo effect appears to be stronger in men. Again, this is just a hypothetical situation. But the placebo effect appears to be stronger in men by quite a bit more than it is in women. Right? For men who got nothing, they had much higher ratings of pain than men who took the placebo uh, by a difference of 2.2 points. For women who got nothing, their ratings were only 0.2 points higher than women who took the placebo. So this placebo effect is much bigger in men than it is in women, which suggests that there might be an interaction and your gender has a moderating effect on the efficacy of the placebo. So the way we can see this maybe a little more clearly is actually by plotting these two-way factorial results. So now it's, it's the exact same representation, right? But we're gonna take this table and we're just gonna plot it as a figure. 
So first, we're, for the men, we're going to plot the mean for the placebo group and then the mean for the nothing group. And you'll notice that the difference then we can put as the slope of this line, which is 2.2. For women, right, we can plot their data points. So it's 6.4 and 6.6. .6. So the difference or the slope in this line is 0 0.2. Therefore, if we see a difference in these slopes, that is an interaction, right? So this is exact, exactly the same as what we were talking about on the previous slide. But now rather than thinking about it more specifically as the subtraction of these differences, you can think about it as a difference in slopes. And if these slopes are different, then that means the effect of taking the placebo is different, depending on if you're a man or a woman. So here we're seeing evidence of an interaction because the, the slope in the group of men is much steeper than the slope in the group of women. So the degree to which these lines are not parallel is going to tell us how strong this interaction is, right? Because again, if the slope was the exact same and women also had a slope of 2.2, these lines would be parallel. So if they're crossing, right, as they're, as they're moving towards crossing, they're becoming less parallel and kind of the strongest kind of effect would be if these lines crossed over completely. So I hope that helps with kind of the understanding of the interaction, but we can also see the main effect a little more clearly on this chart as well. So if we think about the main effect of placebo, right, we're ignoring are you in the men group or in the women's group, and we're averaging those data points together. So we would take the average across both groups for the placebo to get 5.8, and we take the average of both groups for the nothing group and get uh, 7.05, and then this line between those two averages is the main effect of placebo, right? We're averaging between men and women to get on average the difference between placebo and nothing. Similarly, we can get the main effect of gender by thinking about averaging between the two uh, uh, placebo conditions, right? So we average placebo with nothing for men to get a single data point of 6.4, and we average placebo with nothing for women to get a single data point of 6.5, uh, and th that would represent the main effect of men versus women, right? We're averaging across levels of the placebo variable to get a single observation for men and a single observation for women, and then we're looking at the difference between men and women on average. Now, we can practice this with a few different scenarios, right? So uh, we want to now ignore kind of those data from before, but it's the same experimental design, and we're just going to plug in uh, different means that we might get in this situation, right? So all of these will have the same model where we have a two by two factorial design where we've got some main effect of gender, some main effect of condition, and then a gender by condition interaction. And based on these graphs, then I want you to think about what is the main effect of gender and what does it mean? What is the main effect of condition and what does it mean? And do these things interact, yes or no? So, so take a second to look at this figure. You know, go ahead and pause the video and just think, is there a main effect of gender? Is there a main effect of condition? And is there a gender by condition interaction? First, we can consider the main effect of gender. So again, we would average across the two different levels of condition to get an average score for women and an average score for men. And it does look like, on average, men and women are different, right? And again, we'd have to conduct a statistical test here, um, but it looks like in terms of their average level of reported pain, there is a difference between those two groups. Similarly, we can look at the main effect of condition by averaging between men and women in the placebo and averaging between men and women in the, the nothing group. And in this case, it doesn't look like there's a main effect of condition because if you got the placebo or if you got nothing, right, you're reporting about six points of perceived pain. So there's a difference between the genders on average, but there's no difference uh, between the conditions on average across gender. So it looks like we've got a main effect of gender, but no main effect of condition. And what about the interaction? Well, check the slopes. Are there any differences in the effective condition between the genders? And in this case, there is not. These slopes are parallel, right? There's no real effective condition in the male group, and there's no real effective condition in the female group. So there is no um, interaction here because the effect of the placebo is the same whether you're a man or a woman in this study. Okay, what about this example? Again, take a second to pause the video. Think about if there's a main effect of gender, a main effect of condition, and if there's any evidence of an interaction. So again, let's start with the main effect of gender. For the men, we'll average across the placebo and the, the nothing conditions to get an average score here. Uh, for the women, we'll average across the placebo and the nothing conditions to get an average score here. And on average across the different conditions, 
it does look like these groups are different. So this would look like there's a main effect of gender here. Similarly, for the main effect of condition, we would average across men and women in the placebo group, and we would average across men and women in the nothing group to get two data points here and here. And it looks like those in the placebo group had lower self-reported pain you know, than those in the nothing group. And again, we'd have to actually do you know, a statistical test to determine if this was a, a, a reliable or interesting difference. Um, but at least on average, yes, it looks like there might be a main effective condition here because the placebo group reported lower pain than the nothing group. What about the interaction though? Well, again, check the slopes. Um, are the differences different? And in this case, they're not. We have two parallel lines again. There is evidence of a placebo effect, right? In men, the placebo group reported lower pain than the nothing group, but that is the same effect that we observed in women, where again, the placebo group reported lower pain than the nothing group. So in this situation, we'd have a main effect of gender, a main effect of condition, but it doesn't look like we actually have an interaction here. All right, what about in this situation? Take a look at the figure and again, pause the video to kind of commit to your answers. But is there a main effect of gender? Is there a main effect of condition? And does it look like there's evidence for an interaction here? Well, for the main effect of gender, it doesn't look like there's much of a main effect. Because again, for gender, what we would do is we would average across the placebo and the nothing condition for men to get a data point right about here in the center of this X. And for women, we would also average across the placebo and the nothing group to get a data point pretty much right in the center of this X. So those points are basically in the same place visually, right? It doesn't really look like there's much evidence of a main effect of gender. What about a main effect of condition? Well, for the placebo group, we'd average across men and women to get a data point here. And for the nothing group, we'd average across men and women to get a data point here. Uh, and those look like they have values that are both about you know six. So those don't look very different either. So on average across genders, there's no real evidence of a placebo effect. What about an interaction? Well, in this case, the slopes are very different, right? They are actually so different, they cross and, and we get a reversal of the placebo effect in men versus women. So for men, receiving the placebo actually led them to report higher levels of pain, whereas for women, receiving their placebo led them to report lower levels of pain. So the difference between the placebo and the nothing group, which is to say the effect of placebo, totally flips. It reverses if you're a man or if you're a woman. So in this case, because we see the effect going in two different directions, depending on what group you're in, it really looks like your gender has a significant influence on the effectiveness of that placebo. So the effective condition depends on your gender, which is to say, right, it looks like there's a statistical interaction here because the are, you know, again, and we'd have to do a statistical test to really confirm, is this larger than we might expect due to sampling variability? Uh, but it looks like there's a reversal in the effectiveness of the placebo, depending on what gender you are. Uh, and therefore, you know, we would have evidence for a statistical interaction uh, in this situation. Okay, one final example. Um, let's again, look at this, this, this uh, figure. Um, pause the video if you need to, but think, is there a main effect of gender? Is there a main effect of condition? And then do these two terms interact? So first, let's look at our main effect of gender. As always, right, we'll be looking within the men and then averaging across placebo and nothing to get a data point you know, in the middle of their line. And we'll be looking within the women across placebo and nothing to get a data point in the middle of their line. So we're going to have uh, you know, data points here that look you know, different. And as always, right, we'd actually have to conduct a test to see how different they are. Um, but at least on average, those data points look different. So there might be a main effect of gender in this situation. For conditions, similarly, right, we'll average across men and women who received the placebo, and we'll average across men and women who received nothing, right, and we'll get a data point here for the average of the placebo group, and a data point here for the average of the nothing group. And there is a difference between those, those conditions, right? So the, the, the placebo groups tended to report lower pain on average than the nothing group. Uh, so it looks like there might be a main effective condition here, because again, at least on average, the placebo and the nothing group are different. Well, what about the interaction? Again, check the slopes, right? Is there a difference in the slopes? Another way to think about that is, are the differences different? And in this case, yes, it looks like there is a difference in the effectiveness of our placebo, depending on if you're a man or a woman. So for men, in this case, receiving the placebo led to you to report much lower pain than if you received nothing. But if you're a woman in this case, receiving the placebo didn't really change your perceptions of pain relative to the group who received nothing. 
So it looks like the placebo has an effect on self-reported pain for men, but we don't really find evidence that the placebo has an effect on self-reported pain for women. So this would be consistent with a statistical interaction. And again, we'd have to actually you know, test it to decide is it a reliable interaction. Um, but it looks like just based on the distribution of the data here, we'd have a main effect of gender because on average our two genders are different. We have a main effect of condition because on average the two conditions are different. But those things get superseded by the statistical interaction because that tells us that the effect of the placebo for men is actually different than the effect of the placebo for women. So in this case, we, the interaction right, supersedes these main effects because while it is true that on average across groups there is an effect of condition, what the interaction tells us is that there's actually a real difference if you're, in the, if you're a man versus if you're a woman. So it, you know, although on average this helps, the average isn't necessarily what we're interested in because it matters if you're a woman, you didn't show a placebo effect. And it matters if you're a man because you showed a much larger placebo effect than average. So although the main effect is still you know, true, there is an effect of the placebo on average. If we have that statistically significant interaction, it supersedes the main effect because it's saying, don't look at the average, right? These groups are reliably different and therefore we need to really pay attention to the difference between these two groups.